Welcome back to the channel, Beach Bums. This is part three of our Castle Island adventure. If you haven't seen part one and part two yet, I highly recommend you go back and watch them before you watch this video. You don't want to miss a single second of Castle Island. This is one of the most beautiful islands you will ever see in your lifetime. Created specially for you today, Beach Bums, we have a jam-packed episode. And please, folks, so you don't forget, push the like button now. Push the subscribe button now. When you do so, YouTube will share this content and it is our goal to convert everyone we can to a beach bum and bring good quality of life. We left off in part two by escaping back to the safety of the ocean from a bunch of nasty arachna on the island. It scared Marie and I half to death. We made our way back to our tiny home and had a great night's sleep. Now it's time for part three. I'm the Millionaire Beach Bum. Welcome to the channel. Do I have a million dollars? <laughs> Not anymore, but it's better that way. I don't own a TV or even a pair of shoes. This is our home, Marbury. This is my woman, and this is the view from our porch. I'm happier now than I've ever been. When I was about 45 years old, I had to stop and take an objective look at my life and ask myself, was I achieving the quality of life that I wanted to have? And at that time, the answer was no. I knew I had to make a radical change. Life is different now. It's a little bit slower. It's much more satisfying. Push the subscribe button and join us every week. Come aboard Marbury. In life, you want to go where you're most welcome, and Marbury is one of those places. You guys are ready? Let's do it. I've been telling you we we're gonna dive this shipwreck for the last two parts, and let's jump right to it so we don't miss it again. Here we are approaching from the starboard side and oddly enough you can see the ship is broken in two right in the center, it's just like the Titanic. Here we get a nice view of the starboard midsection of the ship and you can see right here in the center where it broke there is just debris stewed all over the place. And then as we move to the back of the boat, look at the size of that diesel motor. Preserved almost perfectly well. One of the things that I notice about this shipwreck is that there is very little marine growth. And we tend to see that with our boat as well. In the Bahamas, the water is just so absolutely crystal clear and pristine. There is very little marine growth almost anywhere. If anybody watching this knows anything about this wreck, if you've dove on it before, if you have a Wikipedia, anything, please send it our way. Put it in the comments. Now we're working our way back to the front of the ship via the port side. And you can see right there where she run aground. Now we'll make our way to the inside over top the starboard rail. 
And I like to be extremely careful when I'm diving a shipwreck. You never want to make any assumptions and go into any of the enclosed spaces because it's easy to get confused and stuck in there. first looked in this hatch it scared me because I could see material at the bottom like clothing and I thought oh my god is there a person down there but no it's just some canvas this is an open view of the mid section looks like it's been pretty well gutted Guys, I feel extremely fortunate to have discovered and snorkeled on this wreck. I highly recommend it. Guys, I wouldn't consider Castle Island to be anything but an absolute smashing success. It's a top-notch place. There's lots of wildlife. There's lots to do on shore. It's an absolute home run. Smash it out of the park. What do they call that? Grand slam. <laughs> anyway, we do do tours and cruises and charters. If you'd like to see Castle Island, email us. There's only so much fun you can have in one place, and so we started looking for our next anchorage. And, sure enough, we found a place just to the north called Sugar Bay. We're on our way to Sugar Bay, and Marie's at the helm. How's everything going, honey? So bad, good. Right on board. Yeah. I'm trying my luck at fishing here. Come on, big money. On our way to Sandy Bay. There's the lighthouse down there. And get a visual. We are just trying to make our way right up around the corner. And right up beyond that area up there is our destination. of the ocean and the islands around us you know and it just occurs to me it's almost like I'm in a it's almost like what there's an apocalyptic post-apocalyptic or it's just really I just feel like I'm in the twilight zone because we've traveled hundreds of miles and we don't see other boats we don't see anybody out here See, when did we leave in Nagua? I think it's been three days since we've seen anybody. And I just realized as we were traveling in this direction that you know, we don't we haven't seen another boat for a week or more. At least another cruiser boat. So we're gonna go anchor up here and once again, we're going to be completely alone. So, it's cool in a sense, but after a little while, you start to think, gee whiz, where is everybody? Sandy, to you down there? 
Okay. Three colors. Threes. This is called Sugar Bay. It's a lot of beach line. Maybe right up there. All right, we're back out on the reef here. I'm gonna try and catch us some lobster. Let's see what we can do. Oh boy. I was pretty disappointed overall with the fishing here. I didn't see any lobster. I swam rocks like you can see in this video for about a half mile. And all I could see was a couple of small fish. I didn't even see any big snappers, which is what I was looking for. So I didn't get a lot of footage, and the footage I did get, I lost some of it, but I did capture a small feast. Well, we got a little small catch here. That'll be enough to make some ceviche. I just got finished gutting these things, and you can see, nothing to brag about, but it's about the size of a couple small sticks. It's gonna really feed us well. Let me get this grill going. That's how you tie a perfect cleat hitch. We're getting things up, cleaned up from this anchorage. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Not really feeling it here. There's not a lot of rocks um, for fishing. I did get two fish yesterday with the spear gun, so that was pretty good. Um, but there's not a lot of beach either. We got some things we're look, working on in the uh, heading uh, more toward the western side of the island, so we're going to start heading in that direction. But it is a beautiful day, and I think we're going to have a good sail. I think we're looking at about a 12 to 15 knot beam reach here, so let's see what happens. We're definitely ready to go. One night at Sugar Bay was enough for us. There wasn't any beach and there wasn't any lobster. Plus it was time for us to check in at an anchorage with perhaps a marina. So we headed north to the Crooked Island Lodge. This is what I'd call a good sail. We got about 15 knots of wind. Well, 17 knots of wind, we're doing seven and a half knots. And it's so good, the marine's even a little bit chilly. Woo! Talking to my brother about his birthday, and we got a boom hit on the line. This is a really big hit, too. I mean, and this thing. Freaking awesome, catching a beautiful fish always lifts the spirits and now it's back to sailing. I'd say we've got the wind at 90 degrees. So beautiful beam reach. Waves are coming just a little bit almost parallel with our, our uh, running line here. 
There's no sargasm in the water. It's perfectly blue. We're doing seven knots and 15 knots of wind. So this is perfect fishing uh, conditions. And we've already caught one tuna, so. Hey, look at that. There's another cruiser. That's the first boat we've seen in six or so days. My heavens, if you want to know how to burn $2,000 an hour worth of fuel, that's it right there. So this, one, this place is called the Pitts Town Anchorage. Marie just dropped the anchor. Let's go take a look. Whoa, almost fell over. Pitts Town Anchorage. This is on the west end of the Ackland Islands. Very nice. And there is another awesome light tower down that way. We're gonna obviously have to send the drone down there and get a photo of that. And looks like our ink is straight out in front of us. Yep. Look at the rainbow, beautiful. In our next episode, you would not believe this crap. We go to land for a little bit of R&R, &R, come in contact with the sickness at the marina, and then all of the employees abandon the marina, leaving us to fend for ourselves. Yeah, here's the guest houses over here, nobody here. Yeah.